Hello YouTube and all the followers out there. Thanks a lot for tuning in to another vlog by me, Victor Halthorp, two-time Olympian, Danish speed skater. And I just came home from Beijing 2022 and I'm just making a lot of vlogs to share that awesome experience with everybody out there. Few people get to experience it and uh, I decided that I would make it my mission to share the emotions and all the feelings that are just part of being at the winter olympics thanks a lot for tuning in a lot of people are asking me how did beijing do there's been a lot of people complaining i've seen a lot of comments and a lot of international news not necessarily being overly positive about the fact that china got to host the winter olympics so i decided to make this vlog where i will compare these beijing 2022 and the pyeongchang 2018 winter olympics i'm really fortunate um having been at two olympic games so I feel like I should do a comparison. In some ways Beijing was better, in some ways Pyeongchang was better. First of all, one thing that has been awesome for both Olympics was the volunteers that were there and the general mood when you were there in the village and at your skating or any venue that I went to, everybody was just so positive. Of course, one thing that was a bit better in Pyeongchang, Beijing couldn't do much about that, was that there was spectators. In Beijing, we had a few thousands. In Pyeongchang, there was 12,000 spectators at the stadium and they were all so excited to be there. But this is not Beijing's fault, it's just due to COVID-19, sadly. There was so much support from the rest of the world through social media and different initiatives that they made. One of them was at the rink, they had an athlete family camera so that if you signed your family up and gave them some passwords before your events, they could be live on a screen in the middle of the track. So right as I hopped off the ice, I could go over to a screen and say hi to mom and dad, hi friends, hi sister. And that was a really good initiative to make it feel as if people were actually there. If we talk more about the village, which we definitely should, because that's where we spent by far the majority of our time when we were at the Olympics, the village, was pretty similar in some ways, but in some ways Beijing actually did a better job. The apartments in Beijing were beyond what I expected. They were really nice. Um, the beds were bigger, the rooms were bigger, and we had an entire apartment just for three people where we had separate bathrooms even. Whether this was the thing they did for the COVID or if it was just how they planned on it, it was really appreciated and that makes it really nice when you end up staying a month there. In Pyeongchang, the room was a bit smaller and it was a little obvious that this was to be used after the Olympics. Same went for Beijing. It was also going to be used after the Olympics, but they made a better job making it feel as if it was an actual home where in Pyeongchang, it was just all wrapped in plastic or fake floor. Yeah, the lifts, for example, in the buildings were not uh, fully finished. It's not what are going to ruin your Olympic experience, but small things that I noticed in Pyeong or in Beijing that they had done a little better. On the other hand, Pyeongchang, is the winner when it comes to the food. The food wasn't bad in Beijing, but it was a very, it was very plain. You had a huge choice of food. You could get steamed broccoli, you could get fried chicken, you could get a ton of different things, but um, like a bit of spices and you would never have found anything like lasagne or risotto. It would just be pasta, rice, meat, chicken, and very divided in each ingredient. I thought it could be cool with a little bit more meal-ish food than just each food by each food. But again, the choice was just so big and no matter what diet you would be following, you would find anything you would need for that at both Winter Olympics. A little difference, um, in Pyeongchang we had McDonald's as an Olympic sponsor. Here in Beijing it was KFC, personal preference. I ended up tasting each of them once during each Olympics right after my main race. And at that point is you don't really think too much about the quality. It's more, more a matter of, you know, treating yourself well. Logistically, Beijing is for sure the winner. All the venues were much closer to the village itself. For me, it was less than a 15 minute drive to get to the venues where in Pyeongchang, it took about to double. Very surprising, especially given that Beijing is a huge city and I could imagine it must be very difficult to fit all these arena uh, within a short distance from where the village was placed. They must have had the experience since the Summer Olympics in 08. They had reserved an entire lane on all the roads in Beijing city for the Olympic bosses. So whether there was traffic or not, it was just a smooth drive to our venue and back. 
15 minutes extra each way if you have two workouts per day you end up spending an extra hour just sitting on the bus and I'm not trying to be overly impatient but for the legs it is really nice one thing that was a lot nicer in Pyeongchang Beijing couldn't help that but we were in a fully closed bubble in Beijing in Pyeongchang I went on my bike discovered the open roads I went to small villages in in South Korea go out on a cafe outside the village with my parents and different things like that I even biked to the arena a few times as a warm-up or as a cool down whereas in Beijing we could not leave that tiny village that the houses were all 16 or 17 floors tall it's very compact so going for a bike ride outside would be a 700 meters back and forth and when you do that for a long time you become a little nuts up there that was one thing that couldn't be changed and it was necessary but it made a little more fun in Pyeongchang temperature wise Beijing was pretty cold minus 5 minus 10 degrees Celsius or I would say 25 to 35 30 Fahrenheit but they had small buses inside the village so you wouldn't really get cold because it took less time to get to wherever you wanted to be whether it was the gym or the food court the bus to the arena you could hop on this little bus and you'd be there in no time training facility wise it was pretty even the arena itself the ice arena in Beijing was insane I've never seen an arena with more airspace inside the venue and the warm-up facilities were just incredible 200 meter running track we're not even runners and and they had more bikes than we were athletes there really nothing that could have been better in Beijing Pyeongchang did a good job too one funny thing that I noticed at both the Winter Olympics is that the bikes that they had for warm-up were of great quality but they were all not able to lift the seat post higher up than what would fit a person that is about 180 at most 185 I'm 192 so for me I would have to like spin with night my knees up in the chest when in Asia you got to do like the Asians so gotta live with that I brought my own bike thankfully so I had that for warm-up then there's all the rest of it all the off ice or off workout activities at both Olympics those were so well arranged nobody was ever bored either in Pyeongchang or Beijing there's so many different games and even though we're in the middle of COVID during uh, the Beijing Olympics they took so many precautions and we could still go play different things and once we were inside the village everybody was PCR tested constantly so we had almost no fear of, of getting COVID while being at the Olympics which made it pretty easy to interact with different countries just like we did in Pyeongchang playing ping pong or pool or different games with each other and at both Olympics there was a mall huge mall here it was op only open for um, competitors or staff whereas in Pyeongchang it was open to whoever wanted to go there <laughs> and um, those malls were pretty cool this one in Beijing was underground withdraw money if you needed it you could go for some different food than they had in the cafeteria you could experience a bit about the history of the country China and South Korea and you could get a haircut you could get your nails done if you're into that and you could buy souvenirs for friends and family I did that got a little Dwen Dwen here about to hand that over to a good friend of mine we both were really cool and I'm excited to see what it's going to be like in Milano Cortina hopefully given that I'm from Denmark I hope to have a lot of family a lot of friends coming with and cheering for me and of course most of all I hope to actually be there four years time I will do anything I can to make it there I love for watching this it's super cool I love making walks and I love sharing all the experiences I get anyways see you for the next vlog thanks for everything subscribe like and share it with friends if they're into sports cheers